Hey y'all. So this video is going to cover three things, COVID-19 hypothesized pathophys, presentation, and treatment principles. So COVID-19 is like nothing we've seen before. It is a virus that can present in many different ways. This video is going to focus on respiratory issues. So keep in mind, this is all level three expert opinion from people who have gone through this in Italy and New York. We really don't have much evidence behind all this and things are changing daily. So this may quickly become outdated. As of April 13th, however, this is the best understanding we have as far as I'm aware of. So the crux of COVID-19 is progressive failure to oxygenate despite increasing supplemental oxygen. The puzzling thing is that people who are profoundly hypoxemic don't always show it. And we'll touch on that a little later. There's three proposed mechanisms based upon early evidence. The first is binding to beta chains on hemoglobin, causing release of iron and significantly decreased oxygen binding to hemoglobin. The second is central binding in the brain, causing dysregulation of the respiratory drive. And the third is interpleural binding, causing inappropriate vasoconstriction and shunt physiology. So the most important thing about this disease is recognizing the phenotype of your patient. There's two different phenotypes, and there's typically three different presentations. So the first and most common phenotype is the L phenotype. L stands for low elastance and low recruitability. So in other words, relatively normal lung physiology. PEEP really isn't helpful and can be harmful for these guys. The first group and by far the most common group is presentation one. Their only issue is tachypnea. Uh, their vitals are usually pretty normal and most of these guys you'll send home. The second presentation is the infamous happy hypoxemic. So here's a video example of somebody who presents it to New York. This person's chatting on their cell phone, looks totally fine, but their SAT is in the 40s. Interestingly, in New York, uh, there are some rare cases where people are seeing switches between presentation one and presentation two within a few hours, and they kind of term this conceptually as like malaria-like fever spikes, so they really just flip-flop between the two. Um, this is quite rare, but it can be seen. Because of this possibility of flip-flopping between states, the general recommendation is that if you do admit a patient, you admit them to a monitored bed. So your treatment goals for the L phenotype are as follows. Get them 100% FiO2 with sufficient flow as soon as possible. Sufficient because you want to keep flow as low as possible to minimize aerosolization, but you need to give them enough flow so that they can oxygenate. You may have heard about proning for these guys. The idea behind that is really just shifting blood flow throughout the lungs over time. The idea here is to mitigate the shunt physiology. So it's less important what position they're in and more important that they're actually switching position. So if you have a big obese person, you can get them to turn from side to side and that will accomplish the same thing. This is one of the things that differentiates COVID-19 from ARDS. In ARDS, proning specifically is important and COVID less so. Your third goal is to transfer to appropriate level of care. So the person that can be discharged home goes home so you don't needlessly expose healthcare workers to COVID. In some places, people are actually going home with home oxygen. At this point, I don't think we're there, but we may see this in the future. The people who need to be admitted go wherever policy dictates at the time of admission. So the most common cause of death is hypoxic arrest. When O2SAT is really important in all of these patients because they can be profoundly hypoxemic without you knowing, and they may not show signs. The biggest thing we need to get our heads around for these guys is if they are not imminently crashing and imminently needing intubation, you need to give a good trial of 100% FiO2 early on. It's going to be hard to not want to immediately intubate your 40% satting patient, but they look fine. So trial the FiO2 first. So the other phenotype is the H phenotype. This is a high elastance, high recruitability state. In other words, they have a lot of atelectasis. PEEP is crucial for these patients. So it's unclear right now if this is normal progression of the disease. The thought is these guys are so tachypnic that over time they cause self-inflicted lung injury because the shearing forces within the lungs causes a ton of inflammation. There is also a hypothesis that this conversion is actually iatrogenic, caused by us giving too many fluids or intubating these guys too early. With too much fluid, the fluid goes to the inflammation in the lungs and you essentially drown them. Really try to avoid giving these guys fluids unless they truly are very hypovolemic. And this leads us to our third presentation, which is the floridly unwell desatting patient. This is essentially your crash intubation. If you don't tube these guys, they will go into hypoxic arrest. The good thing is, in New York, they're seeing very few of these patients, which kind of lends itself to the atrogenic hypothesis. The treatment goals for these guys are early positive pressure, so that essentially means, in our case, intubation, because you're going to need to transfer them afterwards. The rest of these things are really considerations for inpatient care, which I won't touch on at this point. So these guys die from many things, but in our department, it will be likely from hypoxic arrest. If someone's been brewing along at home to Kipnik for a long time and comes in, you may also see a pericarditis, myocarditis picture, because the shearing forces that the tachypnea causes inflammation around the heart as well. These guys might present early on with some chest pain, or they may present later on with PEA or asystolic arrest. We also think that COVID may cause hypercoagulability, so you may see an increased incidence of all sorts of clots in these patients. And that's it. There's your quick overview of COVID-19. So the key things here are recognize the L and H phenotype because that determines whether it's 100% FiO2 or intubation early. The second point is use every ounce of your body not to intubate the patient who has a terrible O2 set but looks fine. 
Don't forget that this is all population level information. Your sick comorbid L patient may still crash because patients don't always fit into nice boxes. Keep in mind, we don't really know what the quote unquote correct action is at this point. So the decision you make is the right one. Thanks for your time.